Patriot Prime Reviews is a channel for adult collectors and may not be suitable for children under 13 years of age. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey, what's going on guys? Patriot Prime here once again with another Transformers review. But before I get started, I need you guys to do me a favor. If you're watching this video right here and are not a subscriber of Patriot Prime Reviews, please consider hitting that subscribe button right now. It won't cost you a thing, but will help me and my channel out tremendously. Also, make sure and check out the sponsor of this video, ToyHacks.com. Hi, I'm Bert the Stormtrooper, and this is the Legacy Generation 2 Laser Optimus Prime, and I love this toy. But he's missing that Generation 2 look, that colorfulness that the original toy had. Hey, Bert! <laughs> Hey, Patriot Prime, where did you come from? It's the internet, man. Anything's possible. Here, put these ToyHacks.com decals on your Laser Optimus Prime. I think you'll get that G2 look that you're looking for. Whoa, dude, you got to show me how you do that. All right, awesome. Let me put these on and uh, let me get right back with you. A few moments later... Holy crap, Laser Prime now looks amazing. He looks just like the original toy, thanks to Toy Hacks, and thanks to you, Patriot Prime. You are welcome. Not only does Toy Hacks make decals for the modern Transformer figures, but they also make reproduction decals for the vintage G1s. Check out their toy stages to find a cool backdrop for your collection display and visit the Toy Hacks Armory. They have a wide variety of weapons in multiple colors. And don't forget, each purchase with ToyHacks.com adds RoboSense to your account that you can use for future purchases. So check out ToyHacks.com and make your collection stand out from the rest. And don't forget, tell them Patriot Prime sent you. The featured bot in this video is 1989's Generation 1 Mega Pretender Thunderwing, a figure that I reviewed way back for my 100 subscriber special about four years ago. So this is a G1 review redo. And I got the idea to do these the other day driving to work. I was thinking about how when I first started my channel, I reviewed some of my absolute favorite G1 toys back before I had an HD camera, proper editing software, proper lighting, or even knew what I was doing. Hell, I'm still not sure I know what I'm doing. So I decided if I am going to do this, I want to do Generation 1 Thunderwing first because right here is my all-time favorite Transformers Pretender figure and one of my all-time favorite characters, thanks to writer Simon Furman, who took over writing the Transformer comic series in the later issues. Now, Thunderwing here, appearing on the toy shelves in 1989, meant he showed up way too late to appear in the animated series. Hell, he wasn't even animated in his own television commercial. But what made this character so popular was his appearance in Marvel Comics, as I said, thanks to Simon Furman. Now, Thunderwing first appeared in issue number 60, where it was shown that he was Lord Thunderwing. He apparently took over leadership of the Decepticons sometime after Strax's death, in issue 17 and he was really fleshed out in the matrix quest storyline where he found out that the autobots were trying to find the matrix that they shot off in optimus prime's body into outer space because in marvel comics the matrix wasn't really as it was in the movie optimus prime died in issue 24 they shot his body into space issue 25 26 with the matrix still inside so the autobots needed the matrix to fight Unicron. Thunderwing caught wind of the Matrix quest and went out to find the Matrix himself and actually did. He was able to get the Matrix. The Matrix ended up corrupting him because the Matrix was now evil and Thunderwing almost beat Optimus Prime to death. So it's so cool that Thunderwing was able to wield the Matrix. Now he probably would have killed Optimus Prime if it wasn't for Nightbeat harpooning him through the chest from a shuttlecraft and then launching the shuttlecraft out of the airlock, airlock of the Ark. So Thunderwing went off into outer space, but he showed up later on in issue 75, completely corrupted by the Matrix, 
to fight Unicron. Unicron, of course, wasn't going to be taken out so easy and blew Thunderwing to pieces. So it was so cool in Marvel Comics that Thunderwing not only was able to wield the Matrix, but he just had this great personality. He was just this awesome, maniacal Decepticon leader, and he was just so obsessed with finding the Matrix, he didn't care who he went through to find it, even his own soldiers. So I love the way he was written, and any old-school G1 Marvel fan probably feels the same way. This here is a great character. So enough of me rambling on about Thunderwing in the comics. Let's go ahead and take a look at this awesome G1 Transformer. And welcome to Patriot Prime Reviews. <laughs> Now we'll start things off by taking a look at Thunderwing in his robot mode, since that is how he came packaged in 1989. And you want to see some great looking box art, check out the artwork on the front of Thunderwing's packaging. That is beautiful. Opposed to the artwork on the back of his packaging. That looks like it was drawn by a preschooler. I don't know what they was thinking because that looks awful. Thunderwing does come with three different weapons. You've got two of these awesome, gigantic mega guns, and these are sweet. I love the looks of these things. Two of them that are completely identical, and he also comes with this smaller pistol that is for the inner robot and ship mode. And of course, you can put these giant weapons in Thunderwing's fist, just like so. And now you have the mighty Thunderwing, all armed and ready for battle. Now, as cool as these guns are, I wish he came with the gun that he was drawn with in Marvel Comics. He had this giant quad barrel cannon that just doesn't exist other than in Marvel Comics. Marvel took a lot of liberties with their pretenders. They gave Bludgeon his sword, Stranglehold the flail, and Octopunch the trident. Now, let's go ahead and take the weapons back out of Thunderwing's hands here and take a closer look at the figure. This is an awesome looking Transformers toy. Tons and tons of sculpted detail that just look fantastic. And look at that face sculpt. That is pure evil. That looks like a Japanese demon Oni mask right there. And I love it. So much better than the IDW pumpkin face look. I hated that. Now when I first got my Thunderwing here, the black paint was all scraped off on the chest and head, so I was able to fix that. The eyes were okay, but I do wish the eyes were red instead of black because they blend right in with the visor. But still, he looks very demonic and I love it. Great gold paint there on the face. Now all the gold on Thunderwing is paint and not gold plastic, so you don't have to worry about GPS. As I said, tons and tons of molded details. He looks like he has scales right there, green pipes, gold pipes, the green for the belt, the pipes and tubes there on the legs. I mean, this guy just looks awesome. A great blend of organic and robotic. He does have one heck of a backpack though, but it really doesn't look too bad. And they even drew the backpack in Marvel Comics. So I like that. I mean, you can't tell that he is a jet at all unless you look at him from the side or the back. I think it hides it really well looking at him straight on. And speaking of looking at him straight on, one of the issues I have with Thunderwing, he looks great there straight on as far as the head's concerned, but you turn him around and he's got a big old hollow noggin. No idea why he has that, because even if that was filled out, it wouldn't bother transformation one bit. So yeah, if people are complaining about Legacy drag strip having a hollow head, Thunderwing did it first. So articulation for Thunderwing, this is a pretender, and the articulation is the arms. They can't even do a complete 360, because they are going to hit on that hinge right there. So the arms can go all the way up. They can go all the way down, and that's it. I guess he's got a little bit of toe wiggle, but that's for transformation. 
head doesn't turn whatsoever. Now the decals are brand new. Those are Toy Hacks decals and the only decals the figure has here on the front or the only decals the figure has in general in robot mode is the Decepticon insignias on the shoulders. So let's go ahead and get Thunderwing rearmed here. All that backpack makes him a little bit back heavy. So there we go. Now there is no way to hide the mini pistol or store the miniature pistol anywhere in Thunderwing's robot mode, the giant shell here. It looks like it would fit inside, but it doesn't because it prevents the shell from completely snapping shut. So a mild complaint there too, because every other pretender, you could hide the secondary weapon, but oh well. Now, of course, as I've said, Thunderwing is a pretender and pretenders hide the transformer inside. So to reveal Thunderwing's true form, reach behind the figure here, lift this up, fold this down so you can rotate this whole head and chest section. It's going to unsnap right here at the crotch. Rotate this up and there is Thunderwing's inner bot. Just slide that right out. Push this back together, snap in place. And real quick, once the inner bot comes out, Thunderwing has a hell of a gap right there behind his head. But as usual, or as I've already said, you can't see it looking straight on. So we'll move the shell out of the way and bring in Thunderwing's inner bot. Go ahead and take the arms, fold them out like so. Bring the feet forward, straighten out the legs, and pop out the head. And there is Thunderwing's true robot form. And really, it's not too bad. It's a pretty generic looking robot toy. Great face sculpt though. I do like that. He's got a little bit more decals than the shell. Got a decal there for the chest, Decepticon emblem, decals on the shoulders and the thighs. And like I said, it's not bad. It's just very generic. Lots of nice sculpted details all the way around. Articulation for this figure, the arms can do a complete 360, so they're a little better than the shell. The legs can go out and they can go in and there is a little bend right there, but that's due to transformation. He's got his little mini pistol right here. You can put that in his hand. So there you have Thunderwing's inner bot all armed and ready for battle. And unlike the shell, no backpack whatsoever. So we'll bring in the shell here along with Thunderwing himself. And there you go. They actually look really good together. And one of the cool things about Marvel Comics was I like the fact that once the inner bot came out of the shell, the inner bot could control the shell as a secondary partner for battle. But unfortunately, if the shell took any damage, it was felt by the inner bot. Now in Marvel, they never showed Thunderwing separating. So as far as anyone knew, the entire shell was Thunderwing since they didn't really stress the fact he was a pretender except for maybe one line. Now in the UK, the inner bot was shown. So now let's go ahead and get the figure transformed. Move the shell out of the way once again. We'll bring in the little bot, remove the weapon, bring the arms in like so. You saw the head just flip down. So fold the head down. Now you're going to bring the feet up and just squeeze the legs together like so. You got these little wings right here. You want to grab both of them at the same time and pull down. They're actually on the same hinge. So you pull one down, the other goes, but it's an old figure. I don't want to overstress it. Fold those wings out, flip the tail fins out. And there you have Thunderwings inner jet mode. And it's not too bad. Like I said, very generic, but it works a lot better than some of the other pretender figures that we've got. Great looking toy hacks decals on the figure right there. I did put extras for the wings and the nose cone. I took a bigger decal and split it down the middle with a box cutter. So yeah, it looks really cool. And then you add the extra weapon or the mini gun, mini gun there on top. So now you have Thunder Wings in a robot all transformed and ready for battle. Now, what makes a Mega Pretender a Mega Pretender is the shell can transform as well. So to transform the shell, go ahead and remove the giant guns. Take this section once again, bring this up, fold that back, and then rotate this whole section up. 
bring this back down to tab in place and we're going to bring this down there's a little peg right there that's going to line up with that hole peg that in fold the toes down and then bring the leg section up fold up into the shell and now you're going to take the wings here on his back and bring those down mine are scary tight so i kind of grip it really hard and press down as i go make sure the arms are flat and there you have thunder wings shell in jet mode that thing looks glorious the colors just work so well you've got the organic and cybernetic blending all together here great looking gold paint on the back along with some fantastic looking toy hacks decals i like the cannons there on the shoulders that actually form secondary cannons so i guess the first cannons would be the giant guns right here that you can peg on a couple of different ways you can peg them on via the handle which looks okay but i prefer using the peg right here on the side peg those in on the wings with the handle facing out do this here on the other side and there we go that looks awesome i just i prefer that look and this is actually a very large alt mode it looks awesome multiple thrusters here on the back underneath cleans up really good there is decals right here that it looks like thrusters but they're backwards because they look better in robot mode than they do vehicle mode so you got that going on but still i just i love this now if you think this looks good these two can actually combine together so what we're going to do is remove the blaster here fold the tail fins down and what i like to do this is my preference is i bring the arms up and around just like this and now what you're going to do see the square peg right there it's going to match up to that square hole underneath the nose of the thunderwing shell peg that in take the miniature gun peg here on top and now you have thunderwing in his combined jet mode and that thing is beautiful this is one of my all-time favorite generation one jets it's huge it's colorful and it just it looks amazing i love i abs i am speechless with this thing i love this jet mode so much and all these toy hacks decals really make it pop now unfortunately you have to have the decals for the jet to work because the decals here are the cockpit and the cockpit right there. So if you didn't have any of the decals, just be a lot of blue plastic. So the decals combined with the fantastic looking paint job and the sculpted detail make this an amazing looking jet. The one thing with this jet mode is the miniature pistol here on top. If it opens fire, it's gonna blow the cockpit apart. So not a very good design choice there now me personally why i like the wings or excuse me why i like the arms folded back is it covers up this really big gap right here if you did transformed it per instructions which is with the arms down see how it's got that massive gap right there very unsightly so like i said i like to swing the arms up and over fills that gap up and it just looks so good so there you go guys, Thunderwing in jet mode. And now for some quick size comparisons, here is 1989's Generation 1 Mega Pretender Thunderwing with Generation 1 Megatron, Classics Thunderwing, and the Toy Hacks Age of Extinction Thunderwing. Now this Thunderwing was actually my very first Toy Hacks review and it was pretty cool what they did, they took the body of a Age of Extinction Nitro Zeus and combined it here with the Titans Return Thunderwing. This came in a gift set, and unfortunately, this was the only new Thunderwing that we got. He has the IDW face that I'm not a big fan of whatsoever, but Toy Hacks took the body and this head and made a fantastic 
decal scent that really, really works to give us a newer, modern version of Thunderwing. But man, I really hope Legacy comes out with one. 1989's Generation 1 Mega Pretender Thunderwing is by far, in my opinion, the best Pretender figure that we got out of all of Generation 1. I love the looks of this guy with the organic blended with the robotic. The color scheme works so well for this guy. Plus, he transforms into one of the best looking Decepticon jets out of all of Generation 1. That being said, looks aside, this is not a great Transformers toy by any means. Very limited articulation and the inner bot is very, very generic. This figure would be one that is easily passed over if it wasn't for Simon Furman's excellent writing in the G1 Marvel Comics series. So there you go guys, 1989 Generation 1 Mega Pretender Thunderwing. So, does a 1989 Generation 1 Mega Pretender Thunderwing belong in your collection? Well, if you're an old school G1 Marvel fan like I am, absolutely. This is a must-have figure of an outstanding Marvel Comics Transformers character. Though the toy itself isn't that great, it does look beautiful with the great paint job, the sculpted details, and the fantastic jet mode. I mean, I love those. But as I said, there's no articulation and he's more or less just a very colorful brick. But still, he's a brick of a great Transformers character. Big shout out to Simon Furman for really fleshing this guy out, so to speak, in the comic series and made him just a very memorable Transformers villain. Now, if you are going to hunt a Thunderwing down, be wary, finding a complete one is costly. Last time I looked, he's about $150 complete. But that being said, if you just want him for the shell here, which he was shown mostly as in the comics, you can get that fairly cheap. The most expensive part, I think I've already put it back, was the little pistol for the robot. So if you're piecing him together, that's the one that's going to cost you the most. But yeah, if you do find one, He's a great looking figure that's look, gonna look great back there on your shelf. Now guys, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget to click that bell icon to get notified when I upload new reviews. Also, if you're in any position to help out the channel, I do have a new super thanks button, thanks to YouTube, and I also offer channel memberships. So I have to give a huge shout out to all my current channel members because it's support like yours that helps keep this channel going. Also, do you like the idea of these G1 review redos? I mean, me going back and re-reviewing, redoing some of my old Generation 1 figure reviews. Let me know in the comments. Guys, this is Patriot Prime, signing out. Hoo-ah!